Melissa Frarier didn't fit in with the other teenage girls at school. I was not having the crushes on the young men. I realized I was having crushes on the girls instead. Melissa says a traumatic event in her life left her confused about her sexuality. I had been sexually violated as a child by a man outside of my family, and that affected my gender identity in that I thought it was bad to be a woman, uh, that it was second best, that it was a liability to be a woman because it meant that I could be hurt. At 16 years old, she had her first lesbian relationship. And by the time she was in college, Melissa had embraced a lesbian lifestyle. For 10 years, Melissa went from one failed relationship to the next. Her life was disintegrating. I was involved homosexually. I was not having successful relationships. I was abusing alcohol on almost a daily basis, doing the drugs on the weekend. I was an emotional cutter. I was overweight. I was not healthy. And life was becoming more and more unmanageable. Her live-in partner was fearful of Melissa's outbursts where Melissa would scream, hit walls, and throw things. Finally, she could take no more and confronted her. Melissa thought about going to church to get help, but she didn't think she'd be accepted there. I, I presumed to know what I thought Christians thought of gays and lesbians, and from a few snapshots through television or stories from from some of my friends about their Christian families, I just presume that all Christians hated gays and lesbians. Melissa's presumptions were tested on a daily basis. Her boss, a Christian man, treated Melissa in a way that was contrary to her preconceptions. Bill was, uh, was so gracious toward me and kind and respectful. And as we worked together for several years in this professional environment, Eventually, I knew that he was genuine and safe and trustworthy, and that he genuinely cared for me as a person. After many spiritual conversations with her boss, Melissa asked her live-in lesbian partner to go to church. She said yes. And there was a couple in particular in their 70s, Doris and LJ, who were pillars in this church. And of course they knew, one look at me. I mean, they knew exactly what was going on, and they just They were like Christ to me and stepped right into my life and, and scooped me into their arms and knit me into their hearts. Doris and LJ taught Melissa about the Bible and showed her God's love. One day, Melissa responded. I was alone in my bedroom and I'm just sitting on the edge of my bed and saying those sweet tender words in the stillness of my heart, Jesus, would you come and be Savior and Lord? of my life and he answered that prayer that afternoon and and put a new seed down in my heart uh, that he would begin to grow in ways I never ever ever would have imagined Melissa's partner also made a commitment to Christ and it took time to work out the complexities of their relationship well, we were so emotionally entangled, e emotionally enmeshed and codependent, that was a process of slowly untangling our lives from one another and from the gay and lesbian community that we were a part of. And it was amazing how God just worked that out, like in these three or four month intervals of time where uh, we repented of sexual behavior, but yet we still shared a bedroom together and a bed together. And then time unfolded and that didn't seem right and then eventually realized we, we can't live together, that's not right, we need to move apart, and how God fully separated our lives, and that was then in 1994. Melissa sought counseling through Exodus International, a ministry that promotes freedom from homosexuality through the power of Jesus Christ. There she was encouraged in her new life. How God healed those wounds in my heart, and how He began to teach me Woman is good. Femininity is good. She's equal to men and masculinity, and that both share that crown, that dignity of creation. For a number of years, Melissa has been on the staff of Focus on the Family. She travels around the country, offering hope to those living in homosexuality. 
I had so many points of reference of who I used to be versus who I am now and what my life is like now. It, it is, it's radically two different people, but so much is different. Like, how did you do that, Lord? How did you do that? And thank you for doing that. Thank you so much, Lord.